Hey guys, Doug here for Motion. Welcome back for another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're gonna to keep it short and sweet and we are talking about parachute cables, how to shorten them if they're too long, as well as uh, showing you a product that we make. It's called the Cable Savers. A lot of people have parachute mounts, whether they built them themselves or built, bought them from us or another company. Uh, one thing a lot of folks don't remember to do or don't incorporate is some type of a uh, securing clamp right here. Um, the cable itself is just an inner and an outer cable. So you have an outer braid with an inner cable. And what can happen is if you uh, don't have a clamp right here and um, this gets stuck for some reason in a parachute, the cable will just flex in and tighten because this is being held in. Um, the only true way to make sure you have a successful deployment of this inner cable and as a result the parachute is to clamp it in some fashion here. Okay, so this is just a real simple mount we make. It's anodized black, so it's nice and discreet. It's uh, basically a billet clamp that goes onto a form piece and uses two pieces of hardware. It couldn't be more simple. It'll pretty much work on any single parachute mount I've ever seen because all you're doing is drilling two additional holes. Um, in the back of your plate or the mount itself. So it can be adapted. And the nice thing is you can put it from either direction and adapt it kind of however you want. If you have a motion racehorse parachute, it'll use the same bolt pattern you already have. So it really couldn't be any easier and it's only 29 bucks. So the main portion of this video is I get this question a lot. We sell a lot of parachute mounts and people ask, how do I shorten a cable? Uh, because it is kind of confusing like what's the right order of operations so it's very quick and easy if you have a cable which is too long our cables are i think a 14 foot standard length um, you'll see they kind of come with a little bit of an exposed end and then a very long tail so basically what you want to do is get everything routed tied up in the car exactly how it's going to be and then just estimate it we are going to estimate that we end it right here so that'll kind of uh, mean that your inner cable will start from here and go this way you don't want to get this this end too close to this because it'll actually catch on that inner loop so you want to have maybe an inch or so inch and a half of the inner cable sticking out as it comes around the corner uh, just a gap between your inner loop so what we will do is uh, just kind of mark that we're going to have somebody inside the car pull the handle back so basically as if they deployed the parachute they're going to push the handle back pretty much like i said just act like you are deploying your cable like you would hit it so that's going to be the amount that gets thrown and then we'll go right back to the back of the car so since we pulled that back we're going to put this back up here and like i said you don't actually have to mark it ahead of time so we're just going to estimate it right there i found that these like bolt cutters like this work really well otherwise you can use a whole lot of different things cutoff wheel or any type of like real strong cutter and uh we'll just chop right through it so now you're gonna see it's nice and flush, so no more of those uh, little wires sticking out. So now we're gonna go ahead and just basically reset the parachute cable. And then, because we have, we already predetermined our length there, so then we can just stick it back through the loop here, which is being um, preserved by a removable before flight tag, and you're done. So then, Obviously you can actually run this, this one can be, we got a little bit of slack that we can pull back in here to keep it a little closer. But uh, if this is too long, you'll wanna do a trial run in your garage with some buddies and you can leave that in there just so you're not repacking a parachute. But just try pulling the handle and make sure the whole thing pops out, uh, the whole inner cable pulls out of here. If you leave it too long, there's a chance that it, you know, every third time or something. So just try it three or four times Make sure it deploys every time with that. And if not, you can just take a set of side cutters and trim it down to a length that'll work. So this is definitely the easiest and cleanest way because um, if you don't pull that parachute before you cut it, you're gonna be trying to clip these little inner wires, which is just a huge pain in the butt and it never looks that nice when you're done. So this is a real simple, quick, easy way to do it. All right, guys, I hope that shed some light on it. Obviously, we're not doing rocket science here, uh, but definitely make sure you do it the right way. This video will help and kind of make a sense because I've actually done it the hard way before and it really didn't turn out how I wanted. Uh, don't forget to pick you up one of these uh, cable holders. They're on our website. I'll put them in the description below. And the most important thing is after you install your parachute and your cable and your release handle, just make sure you try it out five or ten times in the garage with a buddy before you go to use it at the track. You wanna make sure everything functions properly and is repeatable. That way when you can pull the chute when you need it, it's gonna be there for you and you can count on it to come out.
Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope this Tech Tip Tuesday helped you out. Be sure to subscribe and share with a friend if you think that'll help them out, and uh, we will see you guys next time.